day. It's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. I did a little baseline uh, exercise a little while ago using uh, BitTorrent just to show you the framework of how to do a baseline. Some people I think misunderstood what I was trying to do and thought I was actually presenting an actual baseline. I'm just showing you how to do it and what to look for. So somebody uh, said, hey, why don't you do Dropbox? I'd like to see that. And I said, sure, let's give her a try. So Dropbox, uh, I'll be perfectly honest with you, I have uh, been the recipient of Dropbox links to get files from uh, fellow workers. I have never personally used it, so it was a good excuse for me to finally get out and use it. So Dropbox is a service, you uh, sign up, and then you get a little piece of software on your computer, and it shares a folder on your computer uh, to quote-unquote the cloud or the Dropbox servers. And in that case, it's on the net, and you can uh, get a link from Dropbox and give it to your friends, and they can download a file. So what I did here was I broke this baseline into two chunks. There's a startup, which I would always suggest you do with an application baseline, and the startup is just logging in or starting the app. In this case, Dropbox has my credentials already in it. So all I did was launch the app. The problem is, if you take a look here, there's a lot of stuff to see on the screen. So first thing I'm going to do is filter this out somehow to figure out who's doing what. Because again, I don't, I don't need a lot of the extra noise, like the spanning tree stuff and all that kind of stuff. So statistics, endpoints. And by doing that, Wireshark will give me a list of all the MAC addresses. I'm going to sort this by number of packets. And right at the top of the list should be mine. And there I am. It's a Hewlett Packard MAC address. So I'm going to right click, apply as filter, and select it. By doing that now, I've got a display filter for my Ethernet MAC address. So this is all my stuff. Now, some of this, again, a lot of this is not Dropbox specific. It's just everything my machine happened to be sending out at that time. So things like DHCP obviously has nothing to do with your Dropbox application. I'm going to scoot down to this DNS packet right here. So there's a query here uh, looking for this client73.dropbox.com and you get a response back. Now as part of the baselining process you want to find out what makes this application dependent, what makes it work. In this case DNS makes it work. So if DNS was not working you obviously could not resolve the name and then obviously this would fail. More importantly though you also have to understand that dependency analysis also covers things as such as performance. So in this case it took 38 milliseconds for this DNS response to come back. If I had internet issues or a DNS server issue and these packets were held up not dropped, held up, and we had a huge delay here, then obviously the application would seem to be slow as well. So those are the kind of things we do in the application baseline. We also look at the three-way handshake here. Obviously this IP came back as part of this process. Um, if you really want to get picky with DNS, you probably want to open this one up by looking at the packet details. And by looking inside the DNS answer, you can find out what's going on in the sense that Client73dropbox.com was a C name pointing to clientdropbox.com. Well, there's clientdropbox.com, and it's a C name pointing to clientvdropbox.com, which is there, which is an actual IP address. So 199.47.216.172, guess what? That's who we're talking to. So that's the kind of thing you can get into with a lot more detail if you so desire. So back to the conversation. We had a DNS lookup. And then we had a HTTPS connection set up to the Dropbox server. And you can see TLS v1. So all of this obviously is going to be encrypted, kind of uh, SSL-ish if you want to give it a label. And you can see that obviously it's encrypted. Down here, I see my box, my computer spout out this local broadcast, this Dropbox land sync discovery protocol. That was kind of interesting because I found out by default Dropbox turns something on called Enable LAN Sync and by doing that it's looking for local computers that are running Dropbox that it could use as well to share uh, its folder with. In, in the real world if you have a laptop with Dropbox and you're going to work you're probably not going to want to shoot these broadcast packets out. Um, and so on and so on. So you get that. So you probably want to disable that in most cases because most people don't use it on a LAN and they just use it to the cloud. The other thing that I wanted to do was I wanted to actually take a file and drop it onto the cloud. So 
It's called syncing your data. That's the Dropbox term. So this is the other trace I have, which is me syncing a file on the cloud um, to my computer. So the first thing I did was uh, I wanted to find out what kind of data this was. Was that also encrypted? Was it HTTP clear text? Easiest way to do it, stats, IO graph. And by doing that, you end up with this cute little graph of all your packets per tick, which is per second. Well, it's obvious, you can see the, the big spike here, but I'm gonna change the interval, there you go. And by doing so, this gets a lot more detailed and I can see obviously this is my, my sync. So if I come over here and just randomly click anywhere in here, in the background, I'm sure you noticed, if not, I'll click around here and I'll show you. The background changes as you click around the chart. So now that I'm done, I'll just close this off and you can see this is all HTTPS. I also took the file name, converted it to hex, and then you know tried a few hash conversions and tried to search for the name to see if there's any clues. No, no, it's just all encrypted stuff. So for the people that try to figure out, um, you know, is the guy running Dropbox and whatnot, the only way to really figure this out, as I can see, I'm sure you'll all have good ideas as well, is number one, anybody with a DNS query looking for Dropbox, obviously, that's, that's a dead giveaway. Uh, and then secondarily, if you know the IPs of the Dropbox servers, then that's a dead giveaway as well. So that's it. Hope that helps. Have a good day. Bye for now.